how to knit the continental style. Hey everyone, do you want to learn how to knit? Do you want to design your own scarves, hats or sweaters? Or do you want to make the switch to continental knitting? Then you came to the right place because in this video I will show you all the techniques you need to learn to start knitting. And don't be scared, I will be including tons of slow motion sections in this video so you can easily follow and knit along even if you never held knitting needles or yarn in your hands before. Now who am I? My name is Norman, I live here in beautiful Germany, I've been knitting for well over 30 years now the fast and efficient continental style, I've been designing my own patterns for just as long, I run a successful knitting blog and I own way too much yarn. With this video I really tried to create a resource I wish I would have had when I started knitting. All the basics but also these easy little twists that are super simple to implement but make all the difference. And my second focus will be on showing you techniques that will be able to last you a lifetime and not shortcuts that may seem simple at first but you'll spend a lifetime trying to unlearn. So let's dive right into it but before like this video right now to support my work and for my subscribers and more experienced knitters watching maybe comment with some encouraging stories how you learned to knit and what helped you the most. I'm sure the beginners will love to read through that. You will need four essential tools to knit. Yarn, knitting needles, a sharp tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. There are many other tools out there but as a start you don't need to buy anything else. You will find links to all the items I am using in the description below. And if you are wondering which yarn and which needles are best for beginners then there is another link in the description that explains this in greater detail as well. Once you have all these tools together I can show you how to knit. So find yourself a comfortable chair where you have good lighting, grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee or hot chocolate and we can dive right into it. Before you can actually start knitting you need to create a row of loops around your knitting needle as a base. Think of it as the fundament you need to build a house. This process is known as cast on or casting on and here's how to do that. Place the ball to the left and a sizable tail to the right. The tail should be three to four times as long as your project will be wide. I will show you the technique first and then I'll show it to you one more time in slow motion. So listen and watch first and then knit along. First. Wrap the yarn around the pinky finger of your left hand two times clockwise, once and twice. And now bring the yarn across the back of your hand and then wrap the yarn around your thumb clockwise once and then secure the tail between your ring and pinky finger. Now pick up both knitting needles and hold them parallel. Next. Insert both knitting needles into the loop around your thumb coming from below. Grab the yarn towards your index finger from behind. Pull the yarn through. Remove the thumb and tighten up by spreading your fingers. From here you need to pull the needles and your first stitch there towards you to create what many say looks a bit like a slingshot. And from here you need to repeat these motions over and over again. So insert your knitting needle into the loop around your thumb coming from below. Grab the yarn towards your index finger from behind. Pull through. Remove your thumb and tighten up. Create another slingshot. Then insert your knitting needles into the loop around your thumb. Grab the yarn towards the index finger, pull through, remove your thumb and tighten up. One last time. Create a slingshot, insert, grab the yarn towards your index finger, pull through 
and now make sure that you tighten up slowly. You want that stitch to sit right next to the previous one and not on top of it or too far away. Let's do it a couple of more times in slow motion. Each little loop you created around your knitting needles is called a stitch. Now, how many stitches should you cast on in this manner? Up to you. For my little practice piece here, I'm going to cast on 20 stitches and I recommend you to do the same for now. So repeat these motions until you count all together 20 stitches or 20 loops around your two needles. This way to start knitting, this cast on is called the long tail cast on because it requires a long tail. It is by far the most versatile method to begin your knitting and even I use this technique more or less on a daily basis. You can also do it with just one knitting needle or around a needle one or two sizes bigger if you need a less stretchy edge. So keep that in mind for future projects. Lesson two, learn how to knit the knit stitch. Now that we cast on our 20 stitches, it's time to start knitting or rather time to start learning the knit stitch. In knitting, there are many different ways to create a loop around your needles. And the most basic way is called the knit stitch. You already learned the cast on stitch and now it's time for the most versatile stitch. So here's how to knit. Turn your needles around. Secure the stitches with your fingers and remove one needle carefully, like this. And now it's time to pick up the yarn and you can do it almost exactly the way we just did. There should be a little tail and you can ignore it. Just focus on the yarn connected to your ball. And then Wrap the yarn around your pinky finger once or two times, whatever you prefer. And then bring the yarn across the back of your hand and pick up your knitting needles a bit like you would, well, I don't know, hold a knife or so. This part here should be nice and tight. If it isn't, you can always pull on the tail to tighten things up or move your finger a bit up and down. This, the yarn here connected to the ball is called the working yarn. I'll show you how to knit the knit stitch first and then we'll talk about alternative ways to hold the yarn and needles. So next pick up the second needle. Again, a bit like you would well, hold a knife, I guess. This is how I hold my right needle. This needle here is called the working needle as you work the stitches with it. So to knit the knit stitch. Bring the stitches here to the tip of the needle. The yarn should be held in back. So not like this, like this. And now insert your right needle, your working needle into the first stitch coming from left to right, from left to right. And now you need to wrap the working yarn around the needle counterclockwise. So Go in from behind and grab the yarn like this. And now you need to pull the yarn through the first loop. So use your index finger as a guide and guide it through. There is your first stitch. And now you can drop the first loop of the left needle. First knit stitch. Let's do it one more time. So insert from left to right. Wrap the yarn around counterclockwise. Guide the yarn through and drop the stitch. One more time. So insert, wrap around counterclockwise, pull through 
and drop this stitch. Let's do it a couple of more times in slow motion. Now we knit all together six stitches here. All the stitches on your knitting needles are called one row and you can knit the exact same stitch into each and every loop of the first row. But before you do that, I want to show you a couple of important pointers. First of all, let's talk about tension. I just showed you to wrap the yarn around your pinky finger two times. But you can also do it just once. The yarn should flow freely across your knitting needles. And as you pick it up, when you knit a stitch, when you knit a stitch, then you should be able to pull out more yarn by simply uh, moving your uh, finger a bit in this direction. So you can gather more yarn. If that is too hard, then just wrap it around your pinky finger once. But it shouldn't, the yarn shouldn't be so loose because if it's too loose, you won't be able to grab the yarn. So it should needs to be nice and tight. You can also wrap the yarn around your index finger like this. And then knit. That's not my preferred method, but maybe it works for you. You can also weave in the yarn through your fingers like this and clench them together a bit like this and then knit. For this little practice piece, I recommend trying out a couple of different ways to hold the yarn. So as I said, I hold the yarn like this and then I knit. But maybe a different way to hold the yarn is easier for you. Maybe it's more comfortable for you if the index finger is much closer to your uh, needle or maybe you enjoy knitting the way I do with the finger a bit farther apart. And then just knit across and uh, practice. So it's always the exact same uh, stitch across every row. So insert from left to right, wrap counterclockwise and so on. And once you are at the end of the row, so you knit every single loop uh, of that first row, you can simply turn your work around. Pick it up the exact same way you just did. So like this. And now you need to make sure that the working yarn is in the back. So not like this, like this. And then you can continue knitting. So insert your knitting needles from left to right and wrap around counterclockwise. Pull through and drop the stitches. I know this might feel a bit awkward, the first couple of stitches and even rows. And you will battle with your knitting needles, holding the yarn and doing all those little things together. I mean, it's just not one thing you have to do. You have to insert, you have to hold the needles, the yarn is probably slipping away and so on. So be patient with yourself, your mind and your muscles, they need to learn the new motions. So give it time. This is just your practice piece and there's no need for it to be perfect. Get accustomed to the new motions and be patient with yourself. As you progress, you may want to try picking the yarn instead of all this wrapping. So this is how I do it. My index finger here acts as a guide. So it's right at the tip of the knitting needle and the yarn rests here on at the tip of, um, on top of the tip of my uh, index finger. And then as I knit the knit stitch, I stretch the loop out towards the right like this. And then I hope you can see this and then I can pick the yarn through. Drop the stitch. So extend to the side, pick through. 
extend, pick through, extend, pick through. And you can go rather fast. I'm not trying to here, but you can go rather fast with this technique. And I have a full tutorial on how to knit faster here on my channel. I'll link it to you up in here. But as you start, I would probably put the focus on getting things right and look neat and uniform and not so much on speed. Speed will come later on and with practice. But this brings me to my second important tip, the position of your fingers. Now I want to stress that I'm not a doctor and I'm just sharing general observations here. So kindly consult a professional if that's a topic you're interested in or you have a treatise or chronic tendonitis or those kind of problems. That being said, there are a couple of things I personally avoid. I keep my hands in a very relaxed position that um, does not stress any of my joints or sinews overly much. This means my left index finger here, my left index finger isn't hyperflexed or uh, stretched uh, and it forms, as I knit, it forms one line with my arm. But I specifically don't stretch it or any of the other fingers. And the same can be said about my thumb. So I don't hyperflex it like this and press it against the needle. It's very, very relaxed. And I don't um, bend my wrists like this or like this. So it's one straight uh, line here as I knit. Think about it like this. You will be holding your fingers in the same position for quite a long time as you knit. So I personally want to avoid any unnatural positions that put too much stress on my hands. And obviously this applies to both hands. So again, don't uh, flex your thumb too much and so on. And this brings me to my last point. Don't grip your needles like you're holding for dear life and you're already shaking. My needles, they rest rather lightly. So I don't actually apply a lot of force uh, to my needles. They rest very, very lightly in my hands. Now I know in the beginning this will be all new to you and your mind and your muscles. They need to get used to uh, the new motions. So you will probably hold things way too tight and possibly even cramp them up. And that is somewhat normal. Still, I want you to take away that once you get used to the motions, consciously try to loosen up. Watch the position of your fingers, your wrists, your hands and so on. And also, as you practice, take breaks. Knitting should never ever cause you pain. So don't try it with brute force. Now I got this from a user, but it definitely has the ring of truth. A good night's sleep will give your brain the chance to process the new skills and things will be much easier in the morning when you can start with fresh energies. And even later on, you should remember to take frequent breaks. Knitting for four hours straight is never a good idea. Also, think of your posture. If you are knitting for longer periods, remember to stick to all the sound advice any office worker will be able to give you. So don't slouch, keep dynamic, stretch out ever so often and so on. This is very important. Now, back to knitting. There are three things I want to address before we move on to the next section. First of all, if you knit across all rows, uh, as I just showed you, you will produce a fabric or knitting stitch pattern called garter stitch. It's very stretchy and quite cuddly. If you want to create neater edges, you may want to consider slipping the first stitch of every row like this. So. I told you to keep the yarn in back, but now bring the yarn to the front and slip the first stitch. So point to point without knitting it. Then bring the yarn to the back and continue knitting. And then knit across the whole row as normal. Then turn the work around. 
Keep the yarn in front and slip the first stitch. Bring the yarn to the back and knit across. If you continue doing this, you will create this really, really neat edge. Note this selvage stitch, this self-finished edge works only for garter stitch. So don't keep on doing this if you learn how to knit more difficult knitting stitch patterns. But as you start out, this is quite great. The second thing, at one point or another, you may run out of yarn or you may want to uh, add a new color. In this case, simply finish knitting one row and then pick up the tail of the new color and tie a simple knot here around the old yarn like this. Leave a little tail and then slide this knot here all the way to the base of your last stitch and then pick up the new color and start knitting the way we did before. Four. Later on, we will have to weave in the tails. I'll show you how to do that in a minute or two. I have a full tutorial on how to change yarns with 10 amazing techniques you may want to check out just in case. And the third thing I want to address. If you want to know how many rows you have knitted, simply count those ridges. So, the tail should be on the right side and then count the ridges. One, two, three, four, five, six ridges. And each of these little ridges stands for two rows. So this means we have altogether 12 rows. If your working yarn is here on the left side, this means you have one unfinished uh, row. So count the ridges and then add plus one. Lesson number three. Now you may want to spice things up a bit. Garter stitch is nice, but there's one more knitting stitch you may want to learn right in the beginning. It's called the purl stitch and it's nothing else but a mirror inverted knit stitch. And this means you knit it exactly the other way round. If you know these two stitches, the knit stitch and the purl stitch, you can probably access 30% of all knitting stitch patterns. So it's very useful. So let's dive right into it. But before, remember, taking breaks is important. So maybe shake out your hands and legs a bit, bring out the garbage or do the dishes and give your body the time to relax a bit. For a purl stitch, the yarn needs to be in front. Remember before, uh, the yarn always had to be in the back, uh, except for the edge stitches, and now it needs to be in front. Before we entered the stitches from left to right, and now you need to do it exactly the other way around, so from right to left. The only thing that stays the same is you need to wrap the yarn around the needle counterclockwise. If you want to learn how to knit co the continental way, then you can remember that no matter which stitch you knit, you always wrap the yarn around the needle counterclockwise. Think of the needle as the center of a clock and then you wrap the yarn uh, counterclockwise. If you knit the yarn clockwise, then you will end up with twisted stitches and that's probably not what you want. Now back to the purl stitch. So yarn is in front, you enter from right to left and now you wrap the yarn around counterclockwise. Next you need to pull the yarn through and you will quickly notice that this is much more difficult than for the knit stitch. So what I do is I push the working yarn forward with my index finger like this. And then you will notice that it's much easier to pull the yarn through. Let's do that one more time. So for the purl stitch, yarn is in front, insert from right to left, wrap around counterclockwise, push the yarn forward and pull through. Again, insert, wrap, push, pull through. Let's do that a couple of more times in slow motion.
If you tension the yarn around your index finger, you can of course also bring your index finger to the front. It's the exact same thing. Um, I have also seen people do it with their thumb. I find this is a bit awkward for me, but maybe that's something that works for you. Now, if you alternate between knitting one row and purling one row, you create a pattern that is called stockinette stitch or stocking stitch. So here at the end of my purl row, I turn around and then I knit across one row. And then I turn the work around again and I purl across one row. And after repeating these two rows for a couple of more times, this is what it will look like now. If you ever bought a sweater in a store, then this is the exact same pattern. Again, it's called stockinette stitch. Typically, this side here is called the right side. And this side here with these little bumps is called the wrong side. And actually, this is the way you can read your knitting. If your stitch has a little V here at its base, then it's a knit stitch. And if it has this little bump here at its base, then it's a purl stitch. But remember, when you turn your work around, every stitch will appear exactly the other way around. So here it looks like a knit stitch. And here it looks like a purl stitch with this little bump here. Knit and purl stitches are mirror inverted stitches. For garter stitch, both sides look the same and that's why you call it a reversible pattern. But you can still tell which side is the right side because here we have our little cast on tail and it hangs down on the right side and this means this side is the right side if it hangs down on the left side, it means it is the wrong side. And you can see how the color transition here doesn't look as neat on the wrong side as it looks on the right side. Now, a stock knit stitch is very neat, but I have to tell you that it will curl in here on the edges. So it's not the best choice for a scarf. You can prevent that by adding a selvage stitch of three stitches in garter stitch on each side. So on the right side, so the smooth side, you knit across all stitches just the way you did before. Nothing special here. Knit across all stitches. You only need to change the wrong side a bit. So let me get there. And here on the wrong side, you don't start with purl stitch. In instead, you bring the yarn to the back and then you knit three stitches and only then bring the yarn to the front and start purling. Purling across all the row. Purl across the whole row. And three stitches before the end of your row, you knit those three stitches again. And if you continue repeating these rows, meaning you always knit the right side and on the wrong side, the purl rows, you knit the first three and the last three stitches, you will create this edge here and this will uh, prevent your knitting from curling and it won't look like this. Now I have a full video on how to prevent knitting from curling here on my channel uh, with quite a lot of other techniques you may want to check out. I'll link it to you up in here. Lesson number four, how to bind off. Now let's recap. You should know how to knit, how to purl, how to add a new yarn, and you already know the two most important knitting stitch patterns as well. So what's left? Well, you need to learn how to finish knitting. This process is called bind off or cast off. Both terms mean the exact same thing. The problem about knitting is if you just pull out your knitting needles like this, then a simple pull will unravel things. And that's probably not what you want. 
all that hard work would be for nothing. Now, it's still something you should keep in mind if you are not satisfied with your first little practice piece here. You can always pull out everything, unravel it to reuse the yarn for your first real little project. But let's suppose you want to use this little swatch here. Well, then you need to secure the stitches to keep them from unraveling. So here's how to bind off. On the right side, meaning the smooth side. Start by knitting two stitches as normal. And then you should have two stitches here on the right needle. And then simply pass the second stitch over the first one. There you go, you bound off one stitch from here. Knit one more stitch, one more stitch. And then pass the new second stitch over the first one. Again. Knit one stitch and pass over. Let's do that a couple of more times in slow motion. Continue binding off in that manner until you reach the very end of the row. So it's always knit one, pass over. And here at the last stitch, bind it off in the same way. And now you can pull out this stitch, break the yarn, so cut it, pull out that stitch. And there you go, you bound off all stitches for an even neater edge. You can slip this stitch and then pick up this left loop here and knit it together with this stitch and then pass over, pass over and pull the yarn through. And this will prevent a little um, ear or hole here. It's probably a technique for more advanced knitters. Still, I wanted to mention it right here and now. So you have heard of it and you can come back to it later on. Anyway, uh, as you can see, your stitches are all secure and you have a neat little edge weaving in tails. There is one little thing left to do. You need to weave in those two tails or maybe you have some tails here in the middle. They aren't pretty and you cannot cut them away. If you do that, the stitches will eventually come loose and things would unravel. Not what you want, instead you need to weave them in. So, thread the tail on a sharp tapestry needle and then Go through the stitches here between two of those garter stitch ridges. Go right through the stitches. So, for I don't know, five, six to ten stitches, like that. Pull the yarn through. Stretch out your knitting a bit. Stretch it out. And then. You can cut away the tail like this. There you go, the tail is gone. For stockinette stitch, I always weave in the tails on the wrong side. Garter stitch is a reversible fabric. I mean, if you just plan to use one size, then please weave in the tail on the wrong side. But um, for stockinette stitch, which is not a reversible pattern, I always do it on the wrong side like this. And I go, in this case, I go, um, diagonally. So I do it like this, stretch out my knitting and then I maybe go a couple of more stitches in a different direction, like so. Well, oh, two more. Then I pull through and again I stretch out my knitting, stretch it out 
and then I cut away the tails. There you go. You just finished knitting your first little swatch. Congratulations. You should really be proud on your work. It may look a bit wonky here and there, but that is nothing to worry about. You just started to learn knitting and that's quite normal. One last little tip here. You can improve the look and feel of your finished project by washing it gently in lukewarm water, then wring it out gently and pin it to a soft surface without overstretching it. And then you let it dry. So because here my little swatch, it went through quite a lot while filming this video. And I really did a lot of sections because, well, sometimes you need to film things twice because things are not in focus and obviously this will be visible. And here you go, I blocked my swatch and this is how it looks like now. So much prettier than before. And if you maybe skip back for a couple of seconds, then you will see what a huge difference blocking can make. Lesson number six. Fixing mistakes. One more thing, you should know that you can fix mistakes, for example, with a crochet hook. So maybe you dropped a stitch and things unraveled a bit. Well, you can use your crochet hook and ladder all the way up using simple chain stitches all the way back to the top. There you go. You fix that dropped stitch. Now I have a full video on how to fix mistakes here on YouTube. So I want to keep things short right here. And now I just want you to be aware of the possibility just because you made a mistake or there's a tiny flaw in your knitting doesn't mean you need to unravel everything. I'll link you my video up in here. Now you learned how to knit the basics. We are back in my living room and maybe you are wondering what you should do from here on. I really, really urge you to practice these essential techniques a bit. If you go to my blog or search through the videos here on my YouTube channel, you will find free patterns for uh, coasters, scarves, dishcloths, and so on that only use the techniques you learned in this video. So cast on knit stitch, purl stitch, and bind off. So maybe go to your local yarn store, find some nice yarn, and start one of these easy projects. Don't over challenge yourself and start on a sweater right away. You can leave all that for later. I'd start with small projects that won't take too long right here. And now I think the most important thing is that you familiarize yourself with these easy stitches. And once you're satisfied with them, you can move on. And as I said, there are already so many projects you can finish with these basic techniques. But I also want to challenge you. I showed you how to knit, but maybe you remember that I called it the continental style. But this is not the only way to knit. There's also English throwing where you hold the yarn in your right hand. Then there's combination knitting, lever knitting, Portuguese knitting, Eastern or Russian knitting, flicking, and so on. None of these methods is better or worse, but sometimes you notice after your third or fourth project that things just don't connect. And then I want you to make the conscious effort to look for other styles. It's very, very important to give it a bit of time. At first, most styles will feel weird, especially if your fingers aren't used to these really small kinds of micro manipulations. Many people say, for example, that learning how to knit the English way is a lot easier. And it does involve less fine control, especially with your left hand. But many advanced knitters also say it's very slow and they want to make the change to continental knitting. And for them, it's often much harder because they need to unlearn years and years of practice. So please don't give up after the first 10 stitches or so, especially if you are new to the needle crafts. Anyway, that's how to knit the continental way. I really, really hope I was able to introduce you to this amazing hobby and you were able to start knitting your first little project. 
please like this video if you enjoyed watching, comment with your questions and your feedback and don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.